What's going on guys, Nathan here bringing you a tutorial video, kind of, sort of, but not really. We are going to be comparing Fraps vs. DX Tori, and uh, this is a video I've kind of wanted to make for a while, uh, just to kind of show you what programs we YouTubers use, and uh, they're, they're kind of pros and cons versus each other. Uh, before we start though, I'd like to point out that I do realize the quality of this video is actually rather crappy. I am using my webcam to record my monitor, but there is a reason for this basically. Um, um, I cannot run a recording program such as Fraps to record my desktop and also record a program like DXTory because once I open DXTory, it, it kind of glitches out and isn't able to record anymore. Plus, Fraps for some reason has been glitching out lately where it doesn't actually record my desktop, so that's kind of a downer. But um, yeah, so we're just kind of uh, gonna have to resort to the webcam and uh, make make do with this. So this is basically Fraps. Now I'm going to switch to the general tab and I'll have to block out a part of the video because. It does have my real name and an email associated with it, and I don't really want the that general information to become known. But basically, what we have here is the uh, general settings of Fraps. Now, these are very basic settings. Uh, DX Story has three out of the five of these. So we have Start Fraps min uh, Minimized, Fraps Window Always on Top, Run Fraps When Window Starts, Monitor Arrow Desktop, and then Minimize to System Tray Only. Now. Um, the last one and the first two are pretty minor, like it, they really don't matter that much, but um, running Fraps when Windows starts, uh, DXTory doesn't have the setting, but you can actually make the setting yourself by just going into um, all programs in your start menu, and then uh, going to your startup folder, I believe it's called, and then you can just basically create a copy of the shortcut for DXTory and then just throw it in that, and then once your PC boots every time, it will just open DXTory. And uh, I actually did that myself, so that's definitely very useful and makes up for this option in Fraps. Um, so monitor arrow desktop, that basically means that you're going to monitor your desktop. Definitely an option to keep checked. I don't see why you wouldn't use it. So, uh, and we are having a guy call me. All right, so hang on. Let me exit Steam really quick because I don't want him talking to me. Okay. So moving on here, we have frames per second. Now frames is interesting in that it has a more advanced like benchmarking scheme than the Story. The Story doesn't really benchmark that much. Um, you have your folder to save your benchmarks in. Obviously, that's pretty essential. Your hotkey, which is also essential, um, and then you can record right here your frames per second, your frame times, and then your min, max, and average. So your frame times, I'm not entirely sure what that is, but your min, max, and average basically will record um, in a certain amount of time your minimum frames your maximum frames and then your average frames that you got in a certain amount of time for example like crisis 2 you know I might get a minimum of like 5 frames per second a maximum of like 45 or something like that and then an average of like 20 for just making up numbers at the top of my head so with the overlay hotkey, which is the other part of this, uh, basically this is your frames per second in itself. Um, I believe it, the default is upper left, so I haven't changed that at all. And uh, yeah, I don't see any reason to hide it, and I don't see any reason to only update it once a second. I'd rather just have a constant frame, um, even if it is always constantly changing in the upper left. But that's just kind of my personal preference. Moving on to the Movies tab here, probably the most important uh, tab in Fraps. What you're going to, well, obviously here we have the essential part, is a uh, folder to save your movies in, you know, just that's just part of it. Your hotkey, which is also essential, I have mine binded to the plus on the number pad. Uh, and then here we have the video capture settings, which is very interesting in Fraps and one of the major downsides, and this is pretty much uh, why I stopped using Fraps. So with Fraps, when you are recording, you cannot play at a different frame per second than you record at. For example, if I played Team Fortress 2 and wanted to record at 30 frames per second, but play at a higher frames per second, that would not be possible. I would be recording and playing at 30 frames per second. And sorry, I bumped the webcam there a little bit. Um, so that that is pretty much the biggest downside of this program. Um, with DX Tori, I now record or er, yeah record at 30 frames per second and play at 
uh, 110 frames per second, and going from 110 frames per second to 30 frames per second is a huge downside. Like to me, that that's not even worth recording uh, anymore. I I just much prefer that higher frames per second. And uh, I mean, unless it's something ridiculous like Crisis, I'm um I'm playing like Crisis or something. Like I should not be getting 30 frames per second in a game. That is just ridiculously low. So. Um, that's just, yeah, basically why I stopped using this program. Now, it also has an option for full-size versus half-size recording. DX Story has a much more detailed version of this. Basically, with Fraps, you are either recording at the resolution that you play at, or you can record at the same size resolution that you play at, but it will be a quarter of the actual resolution. Um, if you guys take a look at, like, my first 15 or so Team Fortress 2 videos, that I actually used, um, half-size recording, and I, I always wondered why the videos look so terrible in quality, and it was because I discovered later that it was actually recording at a lower resolution than, like, I was playing at. So, I, once I discovered that, I felt like an idiot, so always keep this at full size if you plan on recording at, um, like, a maximum quality. This loop buffer length, I'm not entirely sure what it does. I don't really see any reason to mess with it, so I just kind of leave it alone. The sound capture settings. Record 1.7 sound, this basically means that uh, it, it will record your system sound. For example, if I'm playing Team Fortress 2, it will record the game sound that is coming out of Team Fortress 2. Uh, and then you have your stereo versus multi-channel audio settings. Um, record external input, obviously, basically, this is your microphone. I have mine to buy uh, uh, Yeti. Obviously, since, well, yeah, I've just had my Yeti for a while. And then you can only capture your microphone while pushing a certain button. Um, I don't really see the usefulness of this, although I, well, I could, but I don't, just don't really personally use this option at all. Um, and then hide mouse cursor in video. Um, people, some people do like this. I use it in their videos. I believe Shibby uses this option, um, but he uses a different program. But I, I personally, in videos, just like to see mouse cursors, so that's just why I uncheck that. Excuse me, and then lock frame rate while recording. Now, this you might think would be the the whole aspect of um, recording at a different frame rate than you're playing at, but after checking and unchecking this and recording, there is literally no difference. Like you still have to record at, or you you still have to play at what you record at in terms of frames per second. So that just kind of sucks a lot. And then you can force lossless RGB capture, which this is very like a, a super advanced concept, but basically there is little to no difference in RGB capture, and uh, it does take a toll on your system. So I just keep it unchecked. Moving on to screenshots, this is very basic. Um, you just basically have your hotkey, what uh, format you want to save it in, and then your screen capture settings. So uh, screenshots is very basic and uh, to the point. Now opening up DxTory here. Let me go find it in my programs. DxTory. All right. All right. So we have DX Story. Now this will take a little bit longer to explain, and uh, I'll try to make everything uh, pretty quick. But basically, this is your profile tab. Um, you can adjust what games you want. Um, for example, I could make a Black Ops 2 profile, which means that I could then do different settings, and then if I want to change to Team Fortress 2, and I have different uh, settings for Team Fortress 2, I could switch profiles, and then go right back to my TF2 settings if like the audio is different or something like that, which is very nice, but uh, personally, I just kind of just leave it to whatever, um, because I just adjust the settings once, and then it's pretty much fine from there. So then you can uh, ignore setting. I'm not, not entirely sure what this does, but I just don't want to uh, ignore... Uh, oh, actually, this is... Like, uh, if I wanted to play Counter-Strike Global Offensive, I believe, this button would basically allow me to ignore the game um, as a profile and maybe keep another profile. I, I'm not entirely sure on that, but that would be my guess. So here we have a raw cap converter, I believe, uh, AVI fix, AVI mux, video settings. So I'm not entirely sure what these do. Um, I don't... Uh, this is really advanced stuff, and I just don't really mess with this stuff at all, so... Um, here we have the frames per second tab. So use default setting. This is just what I do, but basically, um, it will show your video FPS or not. Uh, write your file FPS. I'm not entirely sure what this does, but um, record status. I don't check this, and you can adjust the colors that you record at. So like non-recording, it's green, and then recording, it's orange. Cause I don't know. That's I I just kind of like green versus orange recording or not recording. So, moving on to the folders, this is very basic, you know, just kind of choose your folder that you want to use, 
And then here we have our hotkeys. Now this includes like a lot of stuff. Um, you can push to talk. Have a push to talk hotkey where it, where it will only capture um, your voice or audio with a certain button. Um, then your screenshot hotkeys, and then your um, overlay position, which is your frames per second position. Show or hide your frames per second. So very basic. This is just general hotkeys. Now with your movie settings, this is the most important part of DX Tori. So your codec in D in DX Tori is absolutely important. The default DX Tori codec is absolutely terrible. Do not use it because it is very very heavy and it is very very demanding on your PC. What I recommend is uh, if you guys look up a video by Jack Frags, um, it's how to record with DX Story, and he has a half an hour tutorial basically, like just showing everything about this program. But the most important part of that video, in my opinion, is the codec that he suggests, or he suggests. Sorry, <laughs> it's been a long night. Um, so this is called Lagerith Lossless Codec, and this codec basically makes it so that. Um, the f the file that I'm recording is a lot lighter in terms of size, and it also does not uh, it, it doesn't put as much of a demand on my PC as the default codec. So th and the the quality is actually pretty much the same the exact same thing. So definitely use this codec, guys. It is just awesome. So here you obviously adjust your frames per second. Um, I record at 30, and then you can have your output files. Use just use AVI. I wouldn't mess with RawCap at all. That's just really advanced and really not um, not worth uh, messing with stuff, in my opinion. <laughs> um, the quality, obviously, you can adjust that. Your data rate, key frame rate. I don't know what that's all for. I just kind of leave that alone. Um, the alignment, I really don't know what all of this stuff is, but here you have the include bounce cursor. Synchronized video FPS, do not check this because that means that, um, if you record at 30 frames per second, that means that you will be playing at 30 frames per second, which is not what we want. And then here we have what you record at, which is a huge thing in DX Story um, versus Fraps. So like here, I record at 720p and I play at I believe 1600 by 900 in Team Fortress 2. So this is awesome. You can record at a different resolution than you play. Very very just great because that means that it takes um, a load off of your system instead of recording at 1600 by 900, which would put more of a burden on it. Um, and then here we have our audio settings. Now this is one other fantastic feature of DX Story that I absolutely love, is that you can have multiple audio channels. Now, if I were to record a 10 second whatever in Team Fortress 2 of me talking, and I were to drag it into Sony Vegas, it would give me two lines, like one here and then one here. This would be game sound, like sound coming from the actual, from my computer, so like uh, explosions and stuff from the game. And then this would be my microphone sound. Now this might be very, very basic, but it is great because if I were to do a let's play for example that would be an hour long and I discovered at the end that my microphone was way too high in in Sony Vegas I could actually adjust the volume because it comes as a different audio channel so that the the microphone volume is balanced out uh, using the bottom layer so that is definitely a huge plus it basically means that you don't have to worry about your audio synchronization versus everything and you can add just a ton of stuff you know different programs you can rec um, you know set all the all the bits that you want and what kind of like uh, audio you want to record at and then you can also have a push to talk hotkey that will record um, like the actual um, like game sound or your microphone so that's definitely awesome your screenshots is whatever you know it's just screenshots no one really uses this um, and then your advanced settings just don't mess with any of this stuff I mean if you really want to find out what it does go ahead but uh, I'm just leaving all of this stuff alone. The only thing that might be important would be your threads, which you want as many as possible, I believe. And then you can limit your video FPS, but I don't see why you'd want to do that um, either. And then you have your whatever, I believe this is just general settings, yeah, global settings, and then your information. So, yeah, that was um, kind of a breakdown of both of the programs. Um, Definitely, in my personal opinion, I would recommend DX Story over Fraps every single time because basically because of the codec, you can record, first of all, at a different resolution. Oh, shoot. Extremely sorry about that. But anyway, as I was saying, um, opinion on um, 
basically DX Story is better because first of all because you can record at a different resolution than you are playing at you can record and play at different uh, frames per second and the file size oh one thing I forgot to mention as well the file size if you were to record an hour-long session in DX Story it would save as one file um, it, you can actually see here in my gameplay if I just look at something so, like, I have a Sali gameplay here where it's 6 minutes and 27 seconds. Fraps caps the file size at 3.95 gigabytes, which basically means that once it reaches that, it will split into another f uh, video file, and then that will form, like, multiple video files um, as it records, and it doesn't matter how long the video is, it will just keep on creating video files. With the DXTory, it's all in one file, so it's not just split up into a bunch that you have to keep track of, so that's awesome. And it is a much, much... Uh, lighter file size so like six minutes and 30 seconds is 3.75 gigabytes or whatever 3.74 I'm just kind of rounding whereas in fraps this would probably be around uh, five ish gigs four ish five ish gigs so that's definitely awesome um, definitely important if you're doing like let's plays and doing really really long videos that's just really important as well um, and yeah the biggest thing for me personally is that you can record at a different frame per second than you play at once again, would recommend DX Story over Fraps every single time, but once again, gotta emphasize, uh, emphasize this codec. Once again, Lagrith lossless codec. If you guys can see that, I'll try to zoom in or something in video editing, but um, definitely the, the codec is the key to everything in what you record at for DX Story. And uh, Fraps, you don't have like a customizable codec at all. Um, you're just kind of stuck with the default ones, so... Yeah, that was kind of my comparison. Um, once again, DX Story over Fraps every single time. Um, you can actually it will not mention buying versus um, acquiring the programs if you get my whole uh, gist there. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much the video, guys. Um, I know it ran long, but uh, I pretty much did cover almost every single thing other than the advanced crap in like DX Story. Um, and yeah, that was the video, so please leave a rating on it if you did enjoy it and it was educational and maybe you learned something, um, and subscribe for more whatever if you like my content. <laughs> I was gonna say if you like TF2, but this wasn't a TF2 video. Um, anyway, well, I suppose it was, you know, uh, TF2 sniper in the background there. So anyway, that was the video, guys. Sorry I've been rambling on for a while now, but uh, I'll shut up and, uh, see you later.